investor friends, I'm Michelle Markin. As we all know, the US government and Federal Reserve pumped massive and unprecedented amounts of fiscal and monetary stimulus into the US economy to get it going again over the last couple of years. And this is a double-edged sword because we're seeing the dumpster fire known as inflation rear its ugly head as CPI or consumer price index inflation hit 7.5% in January, as well as what the Fed actually likes to keep track of more is the Personal Consumption Expenditure Index, or PCE, which hit 6.1% lately. So with all that, this is showing that we've had the most inflation in 40 years. And so Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Fed, is faced with a difficult decision. Even as the Ukraine and Russia conflict is ongoing, he still has to raise rates nonetheless, because otherwise inflation is going to just continue spiraling out of control. And some figures suggest that it could even be as high as 15% according to shadowstats.com and who knows what the real figure of inflation is but either way I think that we can all agree that we're feeling price pressures no matter where we turn whether we're buying everyday groceries or if you're trying to buy a house so I'm going to talk about what the impacts of the Fed having to raise interest rates are going to have on things like the stock market and housing as well as what we can look at and track based on what it seems like recent trends have been like so if you also enjoy learning about economics and trying to be financially prepared no matter what happens please be sure to like and subscribe to my video on youtube channel because it greatly helps out with the youtube algorithm and i greatly appreciate it so thanks as much as we've all come to love and enjoy the meme of jay powell and his money printing machine it looks like he's soon going to be turning off the money printing spigot because as he told us several months ago he finally admitted that inflation was no longer transitory and no matter what inflation gauge you're using it's coming way above their two percent target so he started telling everyone that they would need to start tapering and paring down on the u.s treasury bond and mortgage-backed securities that the fed had been buying to stimulate the economy so that's part of why stimulus has been winding down and we may have already been seeing a bit of a taper tantrum in the stock market as the stock market or s p 500 seemed to reach all-time highs at the end of december 2021 and beginning of january 2022 and since then it's been off about eight to ten percent depending on what day you're looking at the stock market so almost in correction territory and this means that markets are anticipating that the fed will raise rates so by now it's not a question of if the fed will raise rates but by how much and at what frequency they'll be raising rates because it's basically set in stone as some have projected that the fed is going to have to raise rates by at least a quarter during their march 2020 meeting and Powell said that he was inclined to propose a 25 basis point rate hike as he testified in front of Congress on March 2nd even though some other Federal Reserve Bank presidents had originally favored a half a percent rate hike but with the Ukraine crisis going on expectations for raising interest rates have since been tempered and historically over the past couple of decades at least the Fed has usually started off a rate hike cycle by only increasing by a quarter of a percent so that would mean interest rates go from the range of 0 to 0 0.25 percent to now being at 0 0.25 percent to 0 0.5 percent so that's what we're looking at as the fed will likely raise interest rates in mid-march and even though the Ukraine-Russia conflict may have influenced the Fed to back off from an initial aggressive rate hike, they can't not raise interest rates because the geopolitical turmoil has the potential to exacerbate increasing energy prices and supply shortages, and all of that will lead to more inflation. So that's why the Fed has a lot of pressure to have to raise interest rates, but not go too quickly because that could cause a lot of market scares and they don't want the existing uncertainty to cause even more fear so that's why they're trying to take it slow and steady and not upset the apple cart per se with the massive shock to our economy that we experienced two years ago, the Fed had to take drastic action to lower the pandemic high unemployment rate of 14.8% reached in April 2020 by using monetary policy in order to slash interest rates to near 0% and also increase money supply and circulation in order to encourage businesses and consumers to borrow and spend money because as they say, one person's spending is another 
other person's income. And all of this was in pursuit of the Fed's dual mandate goals, which are to have maximum employment, as well as to maintain price stability and moderate long-term interest rates. And for a while, Jay Powell was willing to let inflation run hotter in order to have maximum employment. But as we can see, it looks like it's made the dual mandate goals a little bit lopsided. As with employment, we're pretty much back to full employment in the US economy, where if the Fed normally wants to have an unemployment rate of 3.5% to 4.5%, we're now at 4% as of January 2022. And the Fed's expectations for 2022 are between 3.4 to 3.7% of unemployment rate. So still max employment is expected this year as well as for their second dual mandate goal of price stability and moderate long-term interest rates, we can see that their preferred indicator of inflation of PCE inflation at 2% is long blown out of the water where we're seeing PCE inflation at 6.1% as of January, 2022. And the Fed is somehow expecting that to get halved as it has 2.2 to 3% of PCE inflation for 2022. So that seems really optimistic of the Fed. And I suspect that we're gonna have a longer sustained inflation the more that there's geopolitical political tension and also ever increasing prices until the Fed raises interest rates enough to finally get inflation to come back down. And so the impact of low interest rates and inflation has been good and bad, where low interest rates generally pushed up the prices of assets. So you've generally done well if you've owned things like stocks and real estate. And also it's been one of the best times to have a mortgage because you could lock in a low interest rate during the past couple of years. And if you have a 30 year mortgage, you don't have to worry about paying that off right away. And inflation is eroding the value of your debt. So you're actually paying back your your mortgage with dollars that are worth less every day that passes by so you're incentivized to have more debt and that's kind of good if you can afford it but it's also sort of negative for the US government because the Fed's balance sheet has ballooned to $9 trillion, and a lot of that is US Treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities. So the Fed has effectively taken on a lot of debt in order to spur all of this borrowing. So it's kind of good in a way if you're able to take advantage of leveraging debt to your advantage, but it's sort of not a good look for the rest of the country in terms of overall health because Generally, you don't want to be in as much debt and right now the government and corporations and consumers are overloaded with debt in some ways. And also with the geopolitical turmoil, a lot of people had been seeking safe haven in US bonds. So that sent yields down and that also meant that mortgage rates were somewhat affected. So they went down for a little bit, but when the Fed raises interest rates, that's probably also going to make interest rates for mortgages also go up. And eventually that will discourage house prices to go higher and at some point they might hold steady or they might even go lower as interest rates go higher. And then you may be wondering what impact those rising interest rates have on the stock market. An analyst that Deutsche Bank looked at 13 rate hike cycles since 1955 and for the S&P 500, they found that it generally went up in the nine to 10 months after the first rate hike and then it either plateaued or went down for the next 12 to 13 months before resuming its climb after basically two years after the initial rate hike. So we could see potentially if history repeats continued upward direction in the S&P 500, unless the S&P 500 is truly overvalued and then perhaps the markets might continue to tumble if interest rates are too high for the markets to handle. And so it could go either way, either markets will continue their march on up or they might continue a slow decline as some have said like David Einhorn that markets may have peaked back in 2021. And so it's possible that this this is just more of a continued downward trend or markets could suddenly start being bullish again as even though the Fed is raising interest rates, they're not raising them by all that much. So the markets really might not have that much to fear.
And we have recent historical precedent for how stocks behave when the Fed initially hikes interest rates, such as after the Great Recession in December 2015, where they hiked the Fed funds rate by a quarter percent, and then they gradually increase interest rates over the three years after until December 2018, when they capped off rates at two and a quarter to two and a half percent. And then markets in Q4 2018 were freaking out and tumbling mightily. And then by January 2019, the Fed said that they would no longer raise rates and kind of just see where things go. And then by 2020, everything kind of just got blown to smithereens. And then now we're at the beginning of a new rate cycle. So we can see that the Fed was able to raise rates in a gradual way with inflation only being at one to 2% at most during the mid 2010s. But now that figure has gone up to 6.66%, which is sort of ominous. And if inflation is that high, I wonder if it will take only a lower interest rate amount in order for stocks to have fear instilled in them again. So we'll see what happens, but definitely something to keep in mind as the inflation picture is definitely not the same as it was in the previous rate hike cycle. And back to the question, how many rate hikes will there be and at what frequency? It's anyone's guess, but Jay Powell said that he thinks that there could be five or six rate hikes in 2022. And that seems in line with what some economists believe. Like at CME Group, they think that interest rates will end 2022 at the range of 1.5 to 1.75%. And Goldman Sachs echoes a similar sentiment with the year ending at 1.75%. But then JP Morgan Chase believes that there could be nine consecutive rate hikes in a row, which would look like this chart with all of these rate hikes, meaning that at the end of 2022, we should be at the 1.75 to 2% range. And then we should see the rates being at 2.25 to 2.5% by March 2023. So that's a pretty big jump. And also this is in contrast to what the CME group economists think that things will be like by July 2023, where they think that will Will only be between 1.75 to 2%. So overall, nobody is guessing that interest rates will be above 2.5%. So we'll just have to see who will be right in the long term. And Powell has been saying how the US economy is strong now and no longer requires stimulus. And he was asked a question that I think is on a lot of people's minds by Congressman Richie Torres in asking the following question to which Powell responded. And so the inflation that we've seen is the consequence of a strong economy economy colliding with the supply chain disrupted by COVID-19. Given the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the inflationary pressures that could likely follow, is there a risk that raising interest rates could backfire, that it could cause a recession without actually reigning in inflation? How significant is the risk of stagflation? Well, there are several questions in there. Um, so our goal, of course, is to, is to raise interest rates in, uh, in a way that, that uh, restrains inflation and gets it back to levels that we would call consistent with price stability and do that without um, while while still having while still st sustaining uh, an expansion and a strong labor market that's our goal and that's that's how we'll use our our uh, tools there are no guarantees in life but that that is our intention and and what we propose to uh, do so who knows if the Fed will be able to wrangle inflation back to their 2% target while sustaining an economic expansion, or if they're too late to the inflation party and their current policies will massively backfire on them and they might tighten into a recession. And while nobody knows what will happen, we can count on Jay Powell to be monitoring the situation closely. And what we can do as individual investors is just keep staying on top of our favorite companies that we're either currently invested in or that we'd like to be invested in and see how they're performing if their fundamentals are getting better or worse and maybe that might lead to a better buying opportunity at some point down the line and we can also keep studying some of our favorite investors to see how they're investing during some of this inflationary environment and if you enjoyed this video or learned something please like and subscribe and i wish you well on your journey to getting through these difficult economic times and also being the best investor you can be till next time